Hi, my name is Lyle Sopel, and I'm a jade and gemstone artist. And today you're here in my studio with uh, my friend here, the otter. I wanted to show this otter today because it's, uh, first of all, nephrite jade, and it's a real favorite of mine. I've had this in my personal collection for some time, and uh, I really enjoy having it around in my environment. And I wanted to show this piece today because whenever you see it, it evokes an emotion, and most people that come in always respond to it. They, there's no question this piece evokes something to everyone that sees it. So that's what I wanted to talk about today is that kind of idea in um, artistic excellence. And how you get there is through, through mindset. And uh, I'm going to talk about a focused mindset as well. So a focused mindset and uh, having a vision for your art and picking a goal and deciding where it is that you want to go with your vision. So I'll tell you the story. When I was really young, I went on this uh, personal adventure. I went to Europe and I backpacked around Europe. And this is before I had really any... Uh, art school background or any training in art at all. I just had this knowing that I could be an artist. If I really applied myself to it, I could be an artist. But I didn't really understand what art was. So along my trails, I, I ended up in Amsterdam. And I went to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. And I knew about Van Gogh because I had reference to his art through photographs and and things of that nature. So he was familiar to me and I wanted to see it for real in, in the museum. So when I went in and saw his art firsthand, I was completely blown away by it. I just couldn't believe how dynamic and fantastic that art was. It was my first experience of seeing emotion in art. And I could relate the idea that art was emotion. So from that point on in my life, I decided then, right then at that time, from that, that impact, that I wanted to be an artist that shared emotions in his art. So that's been my lifetime struggle and my lifetime determination to put emotion in my art and share it through story and, um, and feeling of however it comes out. So, how do you get there? How do you, how do you share this idea or express emotion in art? Well, it's, it's very much about being conscious of your, of your mindset. And you, uh, you have to have a focused mindset that, that really relates to your day-to-day -day activities. So, I, to, ex to explain it, I think you have to really think about a positive and negative uh, approach and when I go into the uh, into the studio every day, I ask myself, "How do I feel? How how am I today?" Uh, and I think I check in with myself: Am I positive about what I'm going to do today, or am I negative? Am I letting like the outside world, things that I don't have any control over, affect my mindset? You know, things like um, like the news or you know, day-to-day -day politics of the world or things of that no nature, I consciously am aware of that and I put it aside and I don't bring it into the studio. So through the day while I'm working, I mean, where am I, how am I doing, and am I conscious about my mindset? So I found that what happens when I create art, it's my emotional state of mind is translated into the item that I'm working on, whatever it is. This otter is really a straightforward example of how my emotional state is reflected into this. And so to have excellent art, you need to have a response from your clients or your, from your viewers that, re, that reacts emotionally to what you're doing. So I give you an example of that, like, have you ever heard anybody say, oh, I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. 
and I like this and I don't like that. What are they trying to share with you? What are they sharing about their art experience? They're sharing that they don't really know anything about the technical aspect of art. They don't know anything about maybe color. They don't know anything about the sculptural ideas. But when they look at a piece of art, they have an emotional impact with it. So that's what they're trying to share. Everybody does this. They have a feeling about what that is. So for me, I'm always checking in, always translating, and always being positive about my approach to, to art. And through that positive approach, I can always get success. When through success, I can have an excellent art experience. So another thing that's um, really uh, a very important part about success in art is, is first of all, having a vision of, of what it is that you want. Um, and then, and then setting a goal to getting there. So another story that I have that uh, kind of illustrates the ideas. When I was young and in the studio, I was working and producing art, but I, I really didn't um, have a direction. I knew I wanted to advance my career in some way, but I really didn't know where I was gonna go with it. But I had some level of success. So I was kind of like groping in the dark, trying to find my way through. And my wife and, and young son at the time, we took a vacation and we went to Hawaii. And I went to Maui, Lahaina. And if, it, if anybody's been there, you know that um, Lahaina is this really sleepy little town. It's uh, very lovely. It's uh, kind of an old whaler's village. But in the 90s, this was like this dynamic place with... Uh, you know, international art everywhere, and the galleries were just flooded with art from all over the world. So, I remember going into one gallery, it was called the Heine Galleries, and I walked in, and I was just mesmerized by the quality of art that they carried, and how they presented it, and just the international representation of the artists that were there. And uh, I decided then that that's what I wanted. I wanted to be represented by an international gallery, and I wanted my art to be alongside other international artists. So at the time, I couldn't just confront the, the gallery owners, and I didn't feel like my art was at that level yet, but I had that as a vision. I could see it. I had that experience. I knew that's what I wanted. That was my, my vision. So when I went back to the studio, I said to myself, that's what I want. I want to be a world-class artist. And I took it one step further. I told myself, I am a world-class artist. Every day, I would rehearse this in my mind and I'd say, I am a world-class artist. Whenever I'd work in the studio, I'd say, I am a world-class artist. For years, I practiced this idea that I am a world-class artist. So then something happened. I had a, some recognition in the city of Vancouver, where I live. They, city officials would often buy some of my work as representational art for visiting dignitaries. And so this happened one day, where a city official bought my art, and they wanted to give it to a very prestigious person. And so I made something really special for them. And um, they made the presentation, and it was really successful, and they got a lot of praise for it. So the city official came back to me, and he said, thank you, thank you so much for, for doing what you did. It was really great for us to make that presentation. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. And at that one second, something came to my mind, and I said, hey, could you send a message to a city official in Maui, in Lahaina, Hawaii, and ask him to, re to recommend me to the Lahaina galleries. So he said, sure, no problem. So he wrote a nice little letter to a city official in, in Maui, and that guy called the gallery and said, hey, you know, there's this really progressive artist in Canada who would love to be represented by you. And they were so blown away by that presentation from this uh, dignitary in, in Hawaii 
that they took him seriously. They called me and said, why don't you come for an interview? So I did, and that's history. <laughs> I've been working with this gallery for, I don't know now, like 20, 25 years, and it's been successful for both of us, the gallery and myself. And it helps me establish myself in this place that I've always wanted to be as a world-class artist. So what happened there? It was this mindset that I had about being successful, being world-class, and I imprinted it on my unconscious mind. An unconscious mind doesn't know whether that's real or whether that's unreal, but it brought forward or allowed me to find different aspects that could connect me to different ways. So it's more like an intuitive thing happens, you just have to be aware. You have to be consciously aware of things that might happen in your life. And then you can put the pieces together. So that's what I'm saying also about, about the mindset. It's about where are you when you work in the studio? And where I ask myself, where am I? when I work in the studio? Where is my mindset when I create this piece? Where do I want to be? And from that point, whether it's positive or you want to tell a deeper story, you have to have a personal awareness of where you are. So another thing I wanted to share today was, was how, how I work with courts. So if you'd like to come around the other side of the studio here, I've got a couple of projects that I've been working on in quartz. And I find quartz to be like one of the, either the most difficult or the easiest things to work with. So often, uh, when I don't have the mindset, quartz breaks. <laughs> it, it's just like sometimes the most difficult thing to do. It's so uh, delicate and fragile that um, any slip with the tool or bumping and then you can lose parts of it and then ruin your sculpture. So, like, the mindset's really important while I'm working on it. Now, this is a, this is a carrot, so this is all... It's a citrine carrot. It's going to be part of this composition, and here's one that's mostly polished. And then it'll have a jade top. So, what I was saying about, about the quartz is that I am... I'm normally, I work with harder stones, and I work more, normally with jade and uh, other things that require a lot of aggressive energy to create with. And so I kind of like set myself into this um, physical mode of being creative with an aggressive attitude towards the stone, because I have to. Like the jade is just too difficult in, uh, in hardness to... Um, to not approach it with a certain kind of mindset, a certain kind of uh, uh, physical physicalness. And so I find that that puts me in kind of an approach to everything, and I kind of like bulldoze through things. And what I have to be really aware of is when I change mediums, and sometimes, like, I don't like to work with marble because it's too soft, and it sort of lowers my physicality, I suppose you could call it, towards marble, and I'm, marble becomes easy, and I become relaxed with the form, and, and it just puts me into a, a, a very um, easeful manner, and I have to be different when I go back to jade, and jade becomes, it feels like it's so much harder to work with. So I like to stay with sort of one medium, but when I change, I have to be really conscious about how I do that, and so I change, uh, I have to kind of like step back and shift gears. But here's a, um, an eagle piece that uh, required a lot of um, discipline here and conscious effort in order to uh, create this open beak. One little bump or one little chip and then that beak can break off. So this is an example of how it works when it's really well done, I think. So that's really what I wanted to share today was this idea of mindset and, and the idea of, of um, staying positive because in order to um, 
To be successful at this as an artist, you have to have a positive mindset. You cannot have a mindset that's set on worry and anxiety and also on, on success. You have to give one up. So I know it's really, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for me every day when I, when I come into the studio is how do you get out of that frame of mind? How do you change and how do you upgrade yourself to a point of, of being positive and energetic about what you want to do? One of the things that I love to do is think about people that I care about. You know, I think about my family that I love or I think about, um, you know, something that I really like to do. You know, you can even think about the car that you have, that you really love your car. Anything that's going to shift you from some worry and anxiety to, gee, I really like that, or gee, I really love that, or wow, I really love that person, that's a way. That's a really good point to keep in mind, and it brings you to a higher level, and it helps you transform. And then through that positive energy that you have, that conveys into the art that you produce. And that's the thing that your clients and your viewers relate to, is that positive energy that you share in your art. And that's when you get success. So, I wanna thank you for uh, listening today. And I'm just gonna check my Facebook here for, for views and comments. And if there's, uh, Anything that I can further share with you, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. And uh, thank you for being part of this today. So, goodbye for now.